what is one thing medical professionals can start doing today to improve the quality of healthcare? They could start by walking into the room with their patients and saying, how would you like me to address you? If I start off by asking you something non-judgmental that you know the answer to, that you, know, you don't have to dig real deep for how, do you, what would you like to be called? And, and I establish myself as someone who is asking your consent for something that is really important to us, how we're referred to, then I am approaching you as a knowledgeable adult, but I am approaching you as a peer. Well, this is a great day for me to be here because I know two of both of those folks right there. On the right, that was Dr. Debbie Gaboa, who is a regular on Pittsburgh Today Live. And next, we want to talk with the man who is an author, public speaker, and a Guinness World Record holder for his perspectives on healthcare podcasts. We're so happy to have Rob Oliver here with us today. Guinness, and we have it right here. We have the certificate. You are, you have done the longest interview at, go ahead, you know it. You know it by so heart. It's, it's 37 hours. 44 minutes and 17 seconds. And I, I will caution you, I brought the certificate because uh, there are 40,000 Guinness World Records. Only 15,000 of them make the website, oh. which I did, I was very excited about. But then the new book came out and I checked and only 40 or only 4,000 make it into the book and I didn't make it this year, maybe next year. Okay, we're gonna see if we can somehow start like a, a ground network of, of getting you in that book. Why did you start, first of all, the, the podcast? Because this, this, this was a podcast that you then sort of turned into that Guinness World Record. Correct. Why did you start the podcast? So my experience was I've had a lot of healthcare issues that kind of the peak of that was when I was 21, I sustained a paralyzing body surfing injury, which is why I'm in the chair. So paralyzed from the chest down, limited use of my arms and hands. And that kind of formed my understanding of who I am. And people were asking me, can you come speak at our church? Can you come speak to my kid's school? That started a speaking career that moved into speaking to associations, companies about inspiration and about quality healthcare. When COVID hit, that all disappeared. And I had wanted to do a podcast, but I didn't have time. Well, now all of a sudden I had time. So that was the impetus. All right, now I've got the time to do this. Let's see what can happen here. Life is funny in that way. Were you a comfortable public speaker before the accident? So I grew up in a small church and started speaking in church from the time that I was 16. And yeah, I, my dad was a pastor, so public speaking and being in front of people, at, more important than that, bombing in front of people is something that I had my fair experience <laughs> with as a kid. And uh, you get comfortable with that. And yeah, so it's something I'm definitely comfortable with. What did you learn in the podcast? Because again, you were interviewing folks on their experiences, their perspectives on healthcare, which is what you talk about on the podcast. What did sure. you learn? So what I started with was interviewing medical professionals to talk to them about what do you do? What do you think quality health care is? What do you think about the future? And what do you think we could do to improve the quality of care patients receive? That moved me. I thought, you know, I'm missing that patient's perspective. That's what moved me to do the marathon. But in that, what I've learned is if depending on what age you are, depending on what your specialty is, depending on where you come from, you have a different way of looking at healthcare. And I learned not about the professionals, but from the patients I've learned, people want to be listened to. They want to be valued and they want to be part of the process. And want that to tell their story, I guess. Yes. And like you said, every story is different. And we were also talking off camera a little bit. Everybody sort of has their stuff, right. their issues. Um, when, when you talk about your injury and your sort of life path, what is the feedback or what have you learned from that? It's funny that you use the word feedback because for a long time, I've fought against the label of being inspirational, right? I don't find myself to be inspirational. I'm just me, I do my thing to live my life in the way that I want. And yet the feedback that I get after my presentations is inspirational, inspirational, <laughs> inspirational. So I finally said, okay, if that's what you're getting out of it, then embrace that's what- it. Uh, yeah, Embrace it, I'll embrace it. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. And so uh, it's, it's been, a learning experience for me and a growth opportunity for me because what I feel like I speak to is the human condition. Everybody's got obstacles, everybody's got limitations, everybody's got issues. But what we need to do is figure out what are our strengths and how do we maximize our strengths to do amazing things. And that's really what drove me to do the world record. 
And is that what you hope people gain from your podcast? Because you have the world record. We have your book here as well. It's called Still Walking, The Story of a Life Full of Love, Laughter, and Lessons by Rob Oliver. What's the message you hope that people take away? What I want people to take away is you have capabilities, you have strengths. The question is, where do you focus? No one ever achieved greatness by focusing on what they can't do. That's so true. And I love that your podcast, again, Perspectives on Healthcare, because I think your perspective, not just on healthcare and the system, but on life and coming in here and just talking with you, even for these few moments, is, is really impressive. Dare I say, I'm inspirational. Oh, <laughs> you are too kind. And let me just say, you guys were talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, this is also Disability Employment Awareness Month. It's, it's a blight, I say it's a blight, it's a problem for people with disabilities. The employment rate is extremely low, so if we can celebrate employment opportunities for people with disabilities, it's fantastic. Absolutely, well. and just get those conversations going. You bet. Thank you so much, Rob. Well, the Perspectives on Healthcare podcast is available on all major audio streaming services. We will have more information on our website, kdka.com slash talk Pittsburgh. Coming up on Talk Pittsburgh, food, pumpkins, and games. It can't get much better than that. Find out what an upcoming fall festival has to offer as we get crafty with straw.